How many of us notice that we're on a treadmill and have lost our dreams? And how many of us have the courage to do something about it? This is the story of a woman who, against huge obstacles, rekindled and followed through on a dream she'd had since childhood. And in the process, she found herself again. Hi. Hello. I must say that um, there are few people who can get me up this early. <laughs> people coming. I'm glad I could be that one. So this I'll is where that. you come this to train. train. For my sanity. And this is yeah, where I came for training. And this is just, I love this spot. I must say that there's many years that I didn't appreciate it myself. Um, I'd been working hard and yeah, living, hard. living the normal, average life, you know, and, and it was just miserable. And, and now it's just so peaceful and calm, and, and it's just invigorating starting a day this way. So, Liesl, where does your story begin? I was born in Fiennachung, um, never been back there ever. Moved away from there when I was one to Joburg. Yeah, just me and my brother and my, and my mom and dad. I think we were quite the staunch Christian family, actually. Nature lovers as well. What kind of a child were you? I think as a kid, um, I was a little bit not the norm, um, different. I was very much within myself. Um, not quite the one that would go fit in, or even try to fit into a clique. It was just not me, you know, I'd rather just go off and do my own thing. When she was small, Liesl had a traumatic experience. This quiet but happy-go-lucky child was forced inwards, trying to make sense of the world and battling an inner turmoil. I went through sexual abuse for about four years, from about the age of four to eight, um, by a distant family member. It was tough. It, I was threatened. I, I didn't have the guts to, to speak out about it. I didn't want to tell my parents. So, you know, it's something you just absorb and live with and, and hope it's going to stop. I got to the age of eight where I think you start understanding what it's about. I started understanding that this is, this is something sexually not acceptable. And I just basically got to a point one day where I thought, well, I'm going to have to make this stop because I can't ask my parents to make it stop. I literally warned this man that if he ever touched me again, he wouldn't walk again. And thank God it stopped. Are you aware now as a woman, knowing what goes on in the world, how extraordinary it was for an eight-year-old to say that? I think I only realised that now. When she was eight, Liesl's family moved to Cape Town. She'd made her stand and now it was a chance to leave the past behind. Remarkably, she did, but she preferred to explore the world alone. So this is the house that you grew up in? Yes. The Lesbic River runs right at the back of the house and um, that's where I always used to go down and, you know, see if there's any fish around. Water has always been this cleansing thing for me, I think, you know, and I would go down to the river by myself and see if I could spot any fish or, you know, is there anything interesting going on down there or what was happening at the river. I started having fun, but I was quite happy having the fun by myself. I think a free spirit was kind of born from that. In primary school, Liesl began to grow, not just in age, but in size. Soon she was far taller and bigger than her classmates. She felt different and began to retreat even further into her own world. So at school, it wasn't always lekker for you and you'd no. rush to come home and just come home. And that's your my playground. getaway, absolutely, my peace, my peace. From about, I would probably say about age of nine, I started growing very quickly. At the age of 11, I was as tall as my teacher was. I, I looked like a teacher, not one of the kids. And then, you know, you have your body starting to develop and, and you start catching up sidewise, not just, you know, you start growing horizontally too. Suddenly you're a giant amongst these normal sized kids. So I did feel out. I did feel not accepted in a way. In high school, Liesl's size resulted in verbal bullying. A school friend, Tanya Wilson-Harris, watched what was going on and began to understand what Liesl was going through. She was a loner. She pretty much did her own thing. I started hearing stories and things that, that the girls would say that she was a snob. And the boys were even worse, you know. And they would call her fatty and fatso. And 
I realized only in grade 10. And she was sitting there and I saw these boys coming past again and, you know, bad mouthing her and the girls laughing. And I suddenly realized, but hold on, she's not a snob. She's not stuck up, she's being bullied. I think because of my size, I was an easy target for bullies. Um, I wasn't just bullied by kids, I was bullied by teachers. It was very much always about the size. It was, uh, Liesl, we don't know if you can come to, you know, this concert because we don't know if there's going to be a costume big enough. Um, they would put little sayings on pieces of paper and, and pin it on my back. You know, just various comments, which was always size oriented comments. Liesl, this is hectic stuff. It was hectic, um, but I dealt with it in my own way by just being quiet and, and just reminding myself that, you know, these people are also going to grow up. It's not going to last forever. I just had to be strong. Liesl was sporty and was sought out for team sports where she was welcome because of her size. But in truth, her mind was occupied by life after school, where her dreams could become real. I think it was then when, when she realized and she said, I still haven't decided what I'm gonna do one day, Tanya, but whatever it is I'm gonna do, I'm, I'm gonna make it. So I said, well, go for it. You know, go for it, and I know you can achieve it. After school, Liesl studied architecture, met her husband and had two children, but she struggled with the defined roles of motherhood and being a wife. She was losing her sense of self. I felt I needed to fit into what society expected, but I never felt comfortable with that. I had issues with both kids being quite sickly babies, so, you know, I put a lot of pressure on the marriage, in and out of hospitals, and, and it was not easy. And after about 12 years of marriage, um, it basically came to an end. Liesl, what was happening for you in those years? I think in some ways I put myself away because there wasn't time for me. There wasn't time for me to explore. There wasn't time for me to be the curious kid that I always was. There was no time to, to be me. You were in your late 30s and you'd spent 15 years working, living, loving your children, going through a marriage that didn't work. And then you took a leap of faith. What brought you to that point? I was sitting watching a television program with the kids one night, a documentary on cerebral palsy, and it really touched me. I just really got touched by these kids who were in wheelchairs, on crutches, you know, really struggling to move. And they were all just beaming with happiness and smiles and the one kid was asked, you know, if there's anything you can do, what would you want to do? And they said, get up and run. I thought, here I am, able to get up and run, and I'm not. I'm miserable. That was when I just decided I need to revive myself. I need to become alive and, and take this leap of resuscitating myself. And I thought, this is my time to start living. Liesl Skornrad was a 39-year-old mother of two who for 15 years had been working hard to provide for her family. Her marriage hadn't worked out and the dream she'd held since childhood had become a distant memory. Liesl was in a rut and was about to take a huge leap of faith to get herself out of it. I decided that I want to start this new life by aiming for an adventure that I wanted to do since a very young age, of around about eight. I remember just sharing with my friends that I had this dream of swimming from Robben Island to Big Bay one day. Um, it's something the first time I laid eyes on Robben Island, that's what I wanted to do. And I was teased because of my size. You're too big, you're gonna be like a washed out whale. You know, there's, there's no way you can do that. I don't know if they thought a big kid's gonna drown, big kids can't swim, although I was a really good swimmer at school. I needed to challenge myself to prove that I can do whatever I put my mind to, even with restrictions. I've been told so many years, I'm gonna wash out like a whale, I can't do it. 
I have to do this. I want to start living. I want to do this adventure. She said to me, I'm going to swim Robin Island. And I looked at her and I thought, um, all right. If anyone else had to say that to me, I would either pack out laughing or I'd say, you're crazy. But if Liesl says I'm going to swim to Robin Island, she's going to swim to Robin Island. Because she made up her mind. I joined the gym the very next day. It was time to get fit and to get prepared for the swim. I knew it wasn't going to be easy. And for some reason, I needed to do it by myself. I trained by myself. I didn't have anybody coach me. Started off swimming, I think, about four or five lengths that day and thinking, oh, if we're going to swim from the island, you know, but I just kept going. There was just no ways of turning back now. By about October, um, at the age of 39, this was about 2010, I just decided I need to actually get physically into the cold water. I need to start training in the ocean. And I went in knee deep and I was aching from the cold. And I had this moment of thinking, what possessed me to even think that I could do this? But there was this, I can only describe it as this strong inner me that just grabbed me by my collar and said, pull yourself together, you're doing this. And it took me about an hour just to get into the water. And I thought, well, that's enough for one day, you know, to, tomorrow is another day. And it was just going back on the weekends and Saturdays and Sundays. I mean, my kids never complained about going down there. They were just awesome and supporting me. Liesl trained for months and on her 40th birthday set out to attempt her dream swim, the treacherous seven kilometer stretch from Robben Island to Bloberg Beach. The time was now, a physical and symbolic step into a whole new experience of self. On the day, beautiful weather. And as we stopped at the island, I, I didn't grease up. I had just my bathing costume on. I just thought there's no point in greasing. I trained for this hypothermia. I know I can do this. I just basically jumped into the ocean and started going. I didn't want to even waste time thinking about, am I going to get into the water? I just needed to start this. And I started swimming and the clarity of the water was something I had to wrap my mind around because knowing that you could see so far and wondering, would you be able to see if something was swimming towards you? And then I'd switch off and swim a couple of strokes with my eyes closed again and think, I can't go there, I can't go there in my mind. I have to do this and I will not be interrupted by sharks today. There were times where I thought I might have really put myself in literally in the deep end. I think I just really dug deep to find that inner strength and that inner power that I just buried so far for so long. It just had to happen, you know, and, the, and when I felt like quitting, when it felt like I'm really tired, you know, and, and this is, the island's following me, it's, I'm not getting any further. I would just see my kids waiting for me on the beach and I know, okay, that's, that's my reason for getting there, I have to get there. On the 2nd of April 2011, after almost four hours in the water, Liesl Skornrad stepped onto Bloberg Beach. She came out of the water crying with her um, eyes blood red and um, me and my sister was the first one there holding a towel and uh, my grandparents were there as well. I thought that, um, that she did a good job and I was just hoping she wouldn't do it ever again. How did it feel as you stepped out? <laughs> Accomplishment. <laughs> I was told it's impossible, it was so low. I did it. <laughs> I don't think she could have done anything better to give her that confidence. That confidence that she never had at school. And after that swim, she was a totally different person. When I got into the ocean on Robben Island, I said a prayer and I said, God, I'm leaving. All the crap on the island from the past. And it's my birthday. And I'm giving birth to myself. It's a new start. And then what happened? 
I didn't have the idea of what I wanted to do specifically until I had an interview with a journalist. He said, what are you going to be doing next? And I don't know where these words came from and I just said, I'm going to pull something. What were you going to pull? A truck. And he said, what size truck? And I don't know where the words came from, I said 10 tons. I left there that day, no, not a clue what a 10 ton truck even looks like. But knowing that I have now put myself into the next challenge. Six months after her Robben Island swim, Liesel became the first woman in South Africa to pull a 10 ton truck over 20 meters. The strong woman in her having emerged while she was training for her Robben Island swim. News team was there on the day and the lady who did the interview said to me, what do you do after you've done something like this? You know, you've now set a South African record for women, what, what do you do next? And the same words that came that day that I spoke to the journalist, not knowing where these words came from, happened again and I said I'd love to pull something bigger and heavier like an aeroplane. Monday morning I had a phone call from the South African Air Force asking me if I'd like to pull a plane at the Wings and Wheels show, which was only three weeks later. But I thought, I've opened myself up to this journey and I'm not going to say no to anything that comes my way. Liesel, I cannot believe that you pulled this plane. <laughs> I must say, Lisa, looking at it, I can't believe it either. When you said you're going to pull a Dakota, you didn't know how big a Dakota is. When, when they said, you know, we would like you to pull the Dakota, I, didn't, I, I honestly didn't have a clue what size it was. I just, guys, you need to show me what this is, you know, if I'll be able to do this. There was hardly time to train. Um, I had, a, had to have a week of recovery after the truck and then you have a week of preparation and, and the week in between was just kind of like photo shoots and mentally preparing yourself. And three weeks later, I think it was the 9th of December 2011, I became the first woman in the world to pull a Dakota aircraft. Just look behind you at what you pulled. I know. <laughs> it's, um, it's, it's quite amazing looking at it today. So what are you thinking when you've got the harness on, or you're swimming, or you're pulling? With the swim and the pulls, it's very much a mental thing, not just physical. And with the pulls, standing there, you go into your own space. I just switch off to everything that's happening around me. When else in your life have you felt that clarity? The age of eight, when the abuse had to stop. It was just, this is it, no more. This is it. This is the moment. It will happen. Liesel Schoenrad had overcome a difficult childhood and bullying at school. She'd been a wife and a mother, but at the age of 39 decided to live her dreams. After her physical achievements, she decided to close her architectural practice and now talks to kids at schools about bullying and living their dreams. I had a dream of swimming from Robben Island to Big Bay. But I shared this dream with the wrong people. About a year ago, I was asked by a social worker to come and speak to a group of kids. Just to inspire them, you know, they come from very tough homes, that they mustn't give up on their dreams and anything's possible. And I was a little bit hesitant at first because I've never done public speaking, but I went through with it. And I saw what an impact it made on these kids because no one ever takes the time to come and speak to them. No one ever takes the time to come and listen to them afterwards. And I thought, well, if I'm going to speak to kids, I'd like to speak to them about bullying and not giving up on dreams and don't let the bullies batter your dreams and, and do whatever you want to do. I'm gonna show you a last clip. It's a music video that I got from a group in America called Will You Stand? It's a brother and sister who was severely bullied. I will stand beside you. Will you stand? Once we've been there, they always want us to come back and visit with the kids and it's now getting to a point where I'm starting to organise sessions with girls and boys, separate teenagers, in small groups where we just chat about life and what's hit them in their lives and 
it's been quite an eye-opener just to see how they open up to someone who's just willing to listen to them and just helping them and guiding them to turn the bad stuff into good stuff. In a way, you're talking to yourself when you're a little Absolutely. Girl. It's like the little me sitting in the audience when I speak to the kids, you know, and almost like you, if you had to relive it, this is what you should have done. But I don't regret anything that happened ever, ever, anything, because all of that led up to who I am today. I wouldn't have needed to find that inner strength to go and speak to kids. And I wouldn't have been able to reach that child who's now suicidal due to being bullied if I didn't go through those things and, and that forced me to find my strength. Anything is possible. If you stay positive, you can do anything. At this time, I decided to also start winding down the architectural business. The industry started taking a dive again, and I thought, well, you know, this is the perfect time. And it's almost as if God was just leading me into a complete new journey, you know, the fulfillment of, this, of where things were leading to. Liesl's leap of faith went global on the web, and through it, she met her fiancé, former U.S. strongman Rick Taylor. Her leap had not only brought her a stronger sense of self, but a second chance at love. You're in your early 40s now and you really took a decision to course correct your life. What's going to happen in the next 40 years? In the next 40 years I'd really like to start groups for kids, support groups. Um, summer camps, weekend camps, there's such a lack for kids to speak out and I think they feel so lost and so alone, yet they're actually not. I wish now, after all these years, I could have made a difference in her life at school. And that is why I'm so proud of her today, that she is achieving what she wants to achieve. And no matter what it is, she's going to achieve it. And so, Liesl Schoenrod, now that you are on camera, what are you going to do next? I don't know. I'm 42. My body's had a couple of knocks. I've had something in the back of my mind. What is it? Lifting a car with my legs. But we'll see. I don't know. Never say never. I've learned that. <laughs> <laughs>